Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to a brand new week of AutoLine Daily. Coming up later in the show, we've got the results of our latest poll where we wanted to know if you would buy a new vehicle with the logos of your favorite sports teams. But first, let's get to the news. BMW is expanding its motorcycle lineup. It's partnering up with Indian motorcycle company TVS Motors. The two companies will develop and build bikes smaller than 500 cc's, which will then be differentiated and sold under their own brands in India and around the world. Well, it seems like Fisker just cannot stay out of the news, and it has not been good news either. Last week, the company furloughed 160 employees to save cash. Well, turns out Fisker did not give those employees the required 60 days notice, and they just filed a federal lawsuit against the company. And all this has revived the debate about the government handing out money to green startups. Well, here's my auto line insight. The government should absolutely put money into research, but should never give money to companies to run their operations. Maybe you've heard that automakers in North America like to have their dealers stocked up with 60 days of inventory, but that number actually fluctuates with the seasons. You want more inventory in the spring and summer and less in the dead of winter. Well, Wards reports that right now, new car dealers in the U.S have 60 days of inventory at a time when 65 days would be considered ideal. And the lowest inventory is with vehicles built in North America, not the imports. That probably means production will have to increase in the second quarter, and that is good news for the North American industry. Renault just took the wraps off a small concept car called the Twinsy, which is meant to showcase the company's design direction. It was created along with British designer Ross Lovegrove. The rear-drive electric vehicle features a rear-mounted motor and batteries under the floor, which free up more cabin space. While there are a number of wild-looking design cues, one of the most interesting are the wheels and tires, which were designed by Michelin. They kind of look like a futuristic version of its airless tire, what they call the Twiel, combination of tire and wheel. General Motors made a big deal about how its oil life monitoring system would extend service intervals and save customers money. But it looks like that extended interval is causing problems in the 2010 through 2012. Buick La Crosse, Buick Regal, Chevy Equinox, and GMC Terrain all equipped with the 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine. The monitor allows vehicles to go too long between oil changes resulting in premature engine wear. Dealers will now reprogram the software for the monitors at no charge to the customer. But what we want to know is, what are they going to do for out-of-warranty customers? Okay, now for our latest poll results. We base this poll on the fact that Ram sold 3,000 pickups with the logos of the Detroit Red Wings hockey team, and they sold it as a $400 option. Based on that success, Ram wants to offer that option for other sports teams. So we asked you if you would go for an option like that. And 80% of you said, no way. But 20% said yes. And that's a much higher take rate than Ram got. In fact, a 20% take rate would mean 70,000 Ram buyers might go for a sports logo package. So I think they're smart to expand the idea to include other sports teams. Coming up next, have you heard of this new kind of carbon fiber bridge? What they call bridge in a backpack? Stay tuned, it's coming right up. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the Eyes on IndyCar series. On AutoLine After Hours last week, our guest was Kirk Stoidel the head of the Department of Transportation in Michigan. Part of what we talked about was new construction techniques to make bridges 
faster and cheaper. He told us about a fascinating new construction technique. Take a look. There's a, there's a really cool one coming. We're using carbon fiber. What? We call it bridging a backpack. <laughs> and uh, because you literally go to the job, uh, you go out to the job site with a box that's got carbon fiber tubes that are all folded up inside of it. And you get on site, they blow up the tubes, they fill them full of concrete, let them harden in place, and then they pick them up with two small um, um, backhoe dozers and set them in place. And you have this, now you have this arch, a concrete arch with carbon wrapped around it, and then they put forms on top, fill it in, and you can do it in about half the time. Now, you won't, you're not gonna see any of these on an interstate but they're low volume roads. We did one out in the Thumb on M25. The first ones were done out in Maine. So we saw that technology, we said we're gonna bring it here uh, and we did one last year. And it, it saved us time and we think that there's a, a place for that. Is, uh, is, is, there, is there a cost disadvantage to doing it that way? I mean, just no, in, terms of, in, terms of, in terms of just pure cost? Nope, you save money. Really? It's, it's cheaper and it's faster. It's different though. That's the piece that you gotta get people comfortable with it's different. It's not a steel beam. It is a, you know, a concrete arch that, frankly, the Romans built bridges with concrete arches. So, but, but who do you need to make comfortable with this? I mean, the, the builders? I mean, No, um, the infrastructure owners. I mean, we need to make sure, because in this case, most of where that would go would be on county roads. So we actually had some open houses and brought them, brought them there, uh, the engineers that are designing them, so that they know, okay, yeah, this, is, this is acceptable to do this. Uh, because the designer, is taking on the responsibility when they design something that it's going to stand up and it's their professional liability if the thing fails. So there's, you know, a bit of conservativeness to make sure that when you build something it's not going to fall down. You know, there's a lot of great information in that show about roads and transportation infrastructure. In fact, we've got people who commented that they never knew that roads could be so interesting. And we're going to be showing you some of those other innovative construction techniques in upcoming shows. But anyway, that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching and please join us again right here tomorrow.